Bonjour, je vais vous montrer euh, cette vidéo du docteur Marshall qui dure assez longtemps, mais elle, elle est vraiment très claire. Il est sûr que l'antichrist euh, va bientôt venir, euh, car François Bergoglio prépare son chemin, c'est lui qui va l'introniser. Donc euh, c'est important de savoir ce qui se passe en ce moment et euh, d'avoir des renseignements plus précis que va donner le docteur Marshall. Voilà. Bonne écoute. Ascended to the right hand of God, the Father. In the book of Acts, we read that the angel says that Christ our Lord will return again at the end of time in the same way. And as we'll see today, in the same place, with a mission to do something specific. That is, to kill and destroy the Antichrist. The mystery of the ascension of Christ is linked to his, what we might call, descension, when he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And one of the very first things he's going to do is slay the Antichrist. So today, we're going to look at the, the, the theology of the ascension. A lot of people, even Catholics, have a incorrect, even heretical understanding of the Ascension. It's not really your fault because there's been 60 years of bad catechesis. A lot of people think Christ ascended to the Father, that he no longer has a body, or that he sort of parked his body in the garage, he no longer uses his body, maybe he'll put it back on at the end of time. That's all wrong. We're going to look at that today. We're going to look at the biblical verses and the church fathers on Christ returning to the same exact spot where he ascended. I'm going to show you a picture of where he ascended and where he will descend, according to the Church Fathers. And this is not going to be just a bunch of end times, blog speculation, or my private opinion. I'm going to be giving you quotes, teachings from Church Fathers, like St. Irenaeus, St. Paulatus, St. Jerome, St. Cyril of Jerusalem, St. John Chrysostom, St. John of Damascus, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Robert Bellarmine, some recent ones as well. We're going to look at Scripture, Old Testament, and then we're going to get into the very end of the show. Who is the Antichrist? Is he Jewish? Is he the son of a nun, a religious sister? And the two different accounts, two different versions of how Christ will kill the Antichrist, and I'll tell you which one I think is better, and I think, as you see, the arguments uh, that you'll probably agree as well. So that's everything we're going to do today. It's going to be a great show. Uh, lots of info, lots of energy. Of course, today is the feast of the Ascension in the Catholic Church. It also lines up on top of the feast of Our Lady of Fatima, May 13th. So a double feast day to, for us and uh, a blessed double feast day to all of you. And before we get started, we will ask God to bless us, to open our hearts and minds before we enter into this heavy subject. So please pray with me, the Our Father in Latin, Patrimus, Oremus, Nomini Patris, et Fidi, et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in Celi, Sanctificator Nomen Tuum, Advenia Regnum Tuum, Fiat Voluntas Tua, Sicut in Cielo et in Terra, Panem Nostrum Quotidianum de Nobis Odie, et Timite Nobis Debita Nostra, Sicut in Nos Dimitimus Debitoribus Nostris, Nenos in Ducas in Tentationem, Sed libera nos amalo. Amen. All saints, pray for us in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, before we get started, this is going to be a good show. I've done a lot of research, a lot of work. I think you're going to like it. Please hit the like button. And the most important thing you can do for me is share this video, especially share it on Facebook, Twitter. That gets a bigger audience, more people communicating, watching it, sharing it, etc. If you're new, please subscribe to my channel. There's a subscribe button underneath me or in the right-hand corner, depending if you're on mobile. But uh, please subscribe and hit the bell. And when you hit the bell, you'll be notified every time I go live. All right, we are live, so let's get started. Today is the Feast of the Ascension of Jesus Christ. And people have questions about it. People aren't sure exactly what this means. In fact, if you talk to, ask people, Hey, what does it mean that Christ ascended? Where is his body right now? They'll be confused.
because they'll be like, well, Jesus doesn't have a body. He's God. And that's actually heretical. Some people think, well, yeah, he walked around earth, but then he was he rose again, and then he sort of didn't need his body anymore, so he sort of parks it in the garage like a, a classic car and doesn't really use it. But we Catholics believe that every single day when we go to Mass, when the priest says the words of consecration, a miracle, transubstantiation, happens on the altar, and that his body and blood are truly present on the altar. We receive communion, we receive the precious body and blood of Jesus Christ. This means that Christ still has a body. His body is central, essential to the Christian life right now. If Christ didn't have a body, or he no longer uses his body, the Eucharist makes absolutely no sense. So we must affirm that Christ has a body. And this is startling to a lot of people. I haven't really thought it through. But, I mean, you think about it. Does Christ still have hands, fingernails, a face? Yes, he does. Does he have toes and toenails? Does he have nostrils? Does he have a beard and hair? Yes, he does. Christ is fully God and fully man, and he will be fully man forever. In secula seculorum. Ages of ages, he has united humanity to his divine person, hypostatic union. He hasn't done this with the angels. That's part of the argument in uh, the epistle of the Hebrews. He's never done this with the angels, and yet he did it for love of mankind. And after he had accomplished salvation for humanity, he didn't put aside the body. Instead, he lifted up his humanity the right hand of the Father. He is the eternal high priest. His ascension is, is today, really the ascension Thursday, is the day of the priesthood of Christ, in which he enters into the Holy of Holies in heaven, to the right hand of the Father, and he pleads constantly as our priest, as our priest, for our continued salvation, for the application of what he earned, what he accomplished on the cross, and rising. Now, there's also a pretty cool connection here with the cloud. You know, Christ didn't just ascend into heaven like he let go of a balloon, and the balloon goes and goes and goes until you no longer see the balloon. Instead, Acts gives us a very clear description of what happened. A cloud took him. Let's read it. This is Acts chapter 1. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the end of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up. And a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And that's today's show. We're talking about Christ ascending to the right hand and then descending to kill the Antichrist. Now, there's this detail here of a cloud that took him. Now, for the Jewish mind, for the Hebrew mind that had been formed on the prophets of the Old Testament, they would know that going back to the time of Moses, God led the people by a cloud by day and a pillar by night. We know that the cloud and the pillar signify Jesus, Jesus Christ, signifies God's presence. In fact, on Ascension Thursday, on this day in the Catholic Church, we have the Paschal candle, which signifies the humanity of Jesus. If you look into the liturgy of Holy Saturday and the lighting of the Paschal candle, especially in the pre-1955 liturgy, there in the pre-1955, there's a candle that has three candles, which signifies the Trinity, which enters into the church and lights the one big candle, which signifies the humanity of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, him coming back to life. So that candle is the pillar. That candle signifies the pillar of the Old Testament. And also here we have this cloud. So the pillar and the cloud go together. Now in the Old Testament, we see a lot of royal imagery around King David, especially in Psalm the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. 
goes on from the womb of the morning like dew, your, dew, your youth will come to me. And then ultimately, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. We see here in this Davidic psalm that Christ is, or the son of David, is called the Lord. He's God. He's called a priest forever. There's been no priest who's been a priest forever. And yet, it's talking about one who will be a priest forever. And then he will scatter kings, corpses, over the wide earth. Now, this relates to what we see in Daniel. Now, I know a lot of you are like, hey, I thought this was about the Antichrist. We're getting there. We're getting there. I know that's that's what's exciting when I did, by the way, uh, if the moderators could put a link up, I did a YouTube or an online commentary of all 21 chapters of the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse. And I use the Church Fathers, the Popes, the Magisterium. It's a Catholic take. If you want to do the whole Apocalypse, please see that playlist. I know that everyone loves Mark of the Beast, Beast, Antichrist, and we will do that today. But I want to, I want to focus on the, the ascension of Christ, his, his humanity going up before we get his humanity coming down to judge the Antichrist. Now, in Daniel chapter 7, we have the Son of Man prophecy. And here, Daniel sees this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven there came one like a son of man. And he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. End quote. Here, Daniel sees into the future, and he sees the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, coming on the clouds, presented to the Ancient of Days, God the Father. By the way, this imagery is quoted by Jesus when he's on trial before the Sanhedrin, and this is what makes them rip their clothes and go nuts and say, let's crucify him. Because Christ identifies himself as the Son of Man coming to the Father on the clouds. So when we read Acts, where Christ is taken up in a cloud, we realize, of course, Jesus Christ is the Son of Man. He is the Son of David. He is the Messiah. We also see this in the book of Revelation, for example, in chapter 14. It says, Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and seated on the cloud, one like the Son of Man, with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his, head, in his hand. So here, once again, we see Christ, where? On the cloud. The cloud is the sign of his divine presence. All right, so that's the ascension. That's what we celebrate today. And... We read, as I read already in Acts, but also in Joel, chapter 3, Zechariah, chapter 14, that Christ will return again where? The Mount of Olives. I just read it in Acts 1. I'll put it on the screen for you. I think I prepped it. Where are you, Acts 1? Here it is. Get you up here. All right, and when he had said these things, while they looked on, he was raised up. By the way, in the Latin Vulgate here, uh, and in almost all the Ascension passages, the word 